who else hates conflict? <laughs> or maybe like me, you don't avoid conflict. You actually dive headfirst into it. I mean, you love to get it all out there. Well, the one thing we all have in common is that we live in a sinful world full of sinful people, which means conflict is inevitable. But the lie is that conflict cannot be peaceful and it cannot be healthy. My friend Donna Jones, author of Healthy Conflict, Peaceful Life, is going to help us tackle this lie and trade it for the truth. And oh boy, does she have some practical help for us today. Let's get into it. Here's the deal. On any given day, we think 50,000 to 80,000 thoughts. But get this, of those, let's say 50,000, 98% of them are the same ones from yesterday, which means we just keep thinking the same stuff over and over and over again, which is great if it's all true, all encouraging, lovely, praiseworthy, but with the father of the lies on the loose, out to steal your hope, kill your peace, and destroy your faith, my guess is they're not. I know you because I know me. Hi, I'm Heidi Lee Anderson, Christian author, cancer survivor, and social media content creator. And in every episode of the Trade a Lie for a Truth podcast, we're camping out on one thought and picking up the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, to follow the voice of truth above all else. His name is Jesus. Because in his words, then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. You ready? Let's seize the free abundant life in Christ one thought at a time starting with this episode. All right, you guys, I am so excited to dive into this topic because as I was just telling Donna earlier, I am such a people pleaser and I do not love conflict. I love to avoid it if at all possible. So this conversation especially is for me and I'm excited to hear what Donna has to say. But before we dive into this lie, we always kick off every episode with this game, Two Truths and a Lie. And so Donna, you're going to give me three statements and man, I am not the best at this but I will do my best to guess which one is the lie. Are we ready okay. for it? We're ready for it. All right, number one, my daughter is due to have a baby tomorrow. Number what? Two, I ah! was once on a game show, $100,000 pyramid. Three, Whoa. I have spoken in 50 states and on four continents. Oh my goodness, Donna. <laughs> I really hope for the sake, uh, I really hope for the sake of the story that number two is true because I want to hear if you won. But okay, let me guess. Your daughter due tomorrow, that would be so fun too. And I know that you've spoken all over. And so, man, you really are throwing me some hard ones. Okay, I'm going to guess. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to guess is number one the lie. When is your daughter due? She's actually due tomorrow. Her, she yeah. is. So that's she the is. truth. She is. So she is due to have a baby tomorrow. So every day I keep calling her like, how are you feeling? <laughs> she lives 10 minutes. That is so exciting. And that is so nice that you live so close. That can That's almost the stressor, right? Like, what am I going to do when I go in? Is my mom nearby? So that's great. <laughs> okay. So then is the lie number two? No, actually. So see, here's the trick. So I totally to botched a, this one. Donna. No, the trick to being a good liar is... <laughs> <laughs> okay, now no one's going to listen to me, <laughs> no. is to put an element of truth in your life, but not have it be the whole truth. Great. Spoken like in 28 states, not all 50, but Whoa. four continents. Yeah. But wow. you're on your way. You're on your yeah, way. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. Okay. Yeah. The game show. Did you say, did you win? Yeah. No, I, I, no, I did not. That's win. still incredible. That's a yeah. fun opportunity. Isn't that so fun? I mean, it was like a million years ago, but still, yeah, yeah. it was so stressful too. Let me tell you. I'm trying to place what, what kind of game that was. Like, what did you have to guess or do? Okay. So they had a list of like, I want to say like 12 things in a certain category and the celebrity would give you a one word clue I and see. then you had to guess oh my goodness. what that word was. That sounds so, extremely difficult. Well, but I didn't make the $100,000. So Well, still fun to say. I mean, not yeah. everyone can say I've been on a game uh, show. Know, so that's pretty that. impressive. <laughs> that is fun. Cool, Donna. Well, we are so excited to hear what you have to say to us today. Today, we are tackling the lie that conflict cannot be healthy and peaceful. And can you maybe share more about your story and possibly when you first started hearing this lie? Yeah. Well, honestly, I think everybody kind of hears this lie somewhere growing up. 
for some people, it's more overt than others. But, you know, really none of us like conflict or very few of us like conflict. And I like to say the reason so many of us think conflict is bad is because we never learned to see how conflict can turn out good. And I think once we wrap Mm -hmm. our minds around the fact that, oh, wait a minute, you mean conflict can actually bring me closer to someone if it's handled well, then it becomes less scary. And so that's a lot of the book is okay, how do I manage conflict? Because, you know, honestly, Heidi, if I could have written a book that said, how do we eradicate conflict completely from our lives? That would have been the book. Yes. But that's not (laughs) possible. So the next best thing is since we have conflict and it's here to stay is, okay, so how do I handle it in a way for the best possible outcome so that it can actually bring two people closer rather than make them closed off? And that's the goal. You know, we want to handle it in a healthy way so we don't hang our head in regret and go, why did I handle it that way? Or, you know, why did it turn out that way? And now what do I do about it? Is it even possible to fix this? Yeah. So when did you, you said that possibly a lot of people hear this lie when they are growing up in their childhood. Did you first start to hear this in your childhood or when did you start to maybe entertain or hear this lie? Okay. This is, it's really interesting that you asked me this because I actually grew up in a family that handled conflict really well. So I saw people work things through. I saw people not hold grudges. I saw people just say what was on their mind when it was on their mind. And so for me, conflict was just kind of a part of life. I mean, my parents were very realistic. They would just say that's, it's part of life and this is how you deal with it. In fact, I remember very early, maybe like in high school, you know, where I was kind of able to process and my mom just basically saying, Hey, your dad and I have conflict. We just learned to work it through. And as a family, we were very honest about our feelings and our thoughts, and that was acceptable. So we didn't hold grudges. So we would just get things out on the table quickly and then yeah. move on. But here's here's what was interesting. Then I grew up, you know, went to college, got married, and we all think our experience is normal. What I realized is like, oh, that experience is abnormal. And so hmm. I kind of came into conflict in relationships with like, well, we just talk, we just talk about it and we just work it out and yeah. it's no big deal. And then I realized like, oh, that's not how my husband grew up. That's not how my roommate grew up. And yeah. so it was like, oh, okay. Light bulb moment. <laughs> that makes it more difficult because now you're navigating not only your own feelings, but the way other people have learned to handle conflict. Yes. I, I guess that's maybe why it became a passion. And I've experienced it personally, how hurtful it is when conflict doesn't yeah. go well. And gosh, it's so painful when we're in conflict, right? Yes. We obsess about it. We think about it in the shower. We think about it when we're driving on the road. You know, what he yeah. said, what she said, what we said, what we wish we'd said. You know, it just is all yes. consuming. I mean, it is one of those things where we can control our reactions and our responses. But man, the thing about conflict is there's always two people involved. And that sometimes makes things tricky. All right. So before we go into more of this, I mean, we always go straight to the Bible and you do so well at pointing us to the truth to learn what is the truth. And, you know, we know from scripture, it says your word is truth. And so we simply need to open up the Bible to hear what God has to say on the matter. And he actually has a lot to say on conflict, right? And I'd love to hear from you, like where, what stands out to you from the Bible where it talks about this conflict and maybe what can help us see the truth of the matter through scripture? Yeah, such a good question because you're right. The Bible is the plumb line for how we handle this. And okay, so I'm going to, I'm going to backtrack here because yeah, we would all say, yes, absolutely. The Bible is the plumb line, but when yeah. it comes to conflict, because it's such an emotional issue, Most of us don't actually apply what we know the Bible says when we're in the heat of conflict. It just kind of goes out the window, right? Right. So it's really important to kind of know what the Bible says so that when we're in the heat of it, we can recall. Two things, one might be familiar, one is going to be totally unfamiliar. In Ephesians chapter four, it talks about the Apostle Paul is basically saying, hey, listen, you Ephesians, you need not to walk anymore as the Gentiles walk, which is like the unbelieving world. 
And he yeah. says, because they're darkened in their understanding. And that word literally comes from the original Greek where we get the word diameter. Okay. So stay with oh. me because I know this is like yeah. with this. But if you think about diameter, it's from one side of a circle to the other, right? Okay. Yeah. So when we're darkened in our understanding, it means we don't think things through from one side all the way to the other. Oh. So what he's saying is... A person with an unregenerate mind or not following the ways of the Lord doesn't think things through from one side of an issue to the end point of the issue. So it doesn't take into consideration what I say right now will have impact on this relationship tomorrow and the day after mm. that and the day after that and the day after that. So he's saying wisdom thinks things all the way through. So where that becomes practical is oh, we are in yeah. a conflict with our spouse and we have to pause and go, wait a minute, I'm told not to think like I did in my unbelieving days where I just react my spouse yeah. says something to me, I'm just going to shoot right back at him. Or my child yeah. gets snarky with me, I'm going to get snarky right back with my child. Or mm -hmm. my friend is ghosting me, well, I'm going to ghost her. You see what I'm saying? Instead, yes. we go, wait a minute, wait a minute. What I do right now, I need to think it all the way through because it has it real implications for the health of this relationship tomorrow. And so that's why he says, don't think any longer like the Gentiles do because they're darkened in their understanding and it's not going to lead to where you want to go in the path of your relationships. Essentially, I'm you know paraphrasing here. Right. But you know, that's not something I think most of us think through, but honestly, for me, one of the most helpful things I do in the midst of conflict is just push pause for two seconds and actually okay. ask myself, if I say this, how will this impact the relationship? Or if I don't say this, how will this impact the relationship? Sure. Because that gives you such a good litmus test for moving forward. Yeah. And that's so, such an easy question to ask ourselves. Yeah. And it has just tremendous, you know, I mean, you know, because we've all done this. I, I've right. started to say something to my husband and then I pause yeah. and I'm like, wait, do, does he, do I really need to say that right now? No. Yeah, yeah. So just press pause, girl. You do not need to yeah. say this. <laughs> we do not need to say everything that comes through our we minds. We do not need to say everything that comes in our head. Right. Or, you know, conversely, it's like, oh gosh, I don't want to address this, but if I yeah. don't, How's that going to affect the relationship tomorrow? Okay, I guess I need, mm -hmm. you know, put my big girl pants yeah. on and do what God tells me to do and address it. And this. just be so, honest in the moment. Yeah. yeah. That's so interesting. And what was the second scripture you said came the to mind? The second one is found in James chapter one, where it says, let everyone be quick to hear, slow mm -hmm. to speak, and slow to become angry. That's maybe a familiar verse to some people, maybe not, but I think it's really interesting that it's listening and being slow to speak are equated with anger specifically. Oh, yeah. So hmm. what I've learned is, and honestly, through sometimes getting it wrong more than I've gotten yeah. it right, but um, <laughs> is the power of listening in conflict because what ends up happening is that when we respond, when we're angry, let's just say we're not in the heat of it. Let's just say somebody hurt our feelings. Yeah. And so we're kind of stewing over it, right? Yeah. And we have a perspective on it. What listening does when we ask people, it allows us to get a fuller perspective on the issue at hand because we always see our side, right? But yeah. when we yeah. kind of see where somebody else is coming from, it's like, uh oh, I didn't have a full picture. So see, listening yeah. first rather than speaking first, it can dissipate yeah. some anger. And I will talk more about this because it's super important. Yeah. In fact, I might say that might be the most pivotal thing in terms of handling hmm. conflict well. You're right, because there are so many instances where even what someone says, what we hear may be very different than what they thought they said uh -huh. or what they thought they implied. And we can often jump to certain conclusions that maybe weren't even out there in the first place. So yeah. that's a really good point. All right. So for those that are struggling in conflict today, like they are in the midst of it and they're having a hard time seeing how can I even 
move towards resolution or peace. Mm -hmm. What would you say is a good first step to take if they want to move forward towards health in those relationships? Yeah. Oh, so that's the question of the decade, right? It's just oh, the question. Yeah. So let me tell, I'm going to tell you a story because this is going to illustrate yeah. what to do. Yeah. And actually even on okay. my website, I have a free download that's how to start hard Ooh. conversation in a holy way. Okay. So I had a friend, this happened years ago, that we were going to meet for lunch. I had moved away. So halfway point was about 40 minutes away from both of our houses. And so I'm, okay. I make the 40 minute drive and just maybe five minutes before I arrived at the restaurant, I get a text. Oops. Probably should have told you this earlier, but I can't meet today. I'm meeting my husband instead. Oh no. And, and I was like, really? Like you couldn't have texted me this before I got in the car earlier. my 40 minute drive. Yeah. Right? My thought process was, you know, it went back and forth from, okay, this was just a careless mistake to, I cannot believe she did this. Like how disrespectful to, oh my gosh, Donna, yeah. let it go. She's a friend. You know, it was like I had emotional whiplash. Yeah, totally. However, as I was thinking about it, I thought, okay, this is not the first time something like this has happened. Now, not this exact scenario, but something sort of like this. Sure. So I realized if I don't address it this time, I'm going to get bitter. Or I maybe start to think like, is this relationship even worth it? So I thought, okay, I need yeah. to think things through. I need to think, what are the implications for how I handle this? And hmm. again, if this was a, a one-time deal, I would have just let this go. Sure. We all make stupid mistakes sometimes, but it was an ongoing thing. So I, I reached out and said, hey, can we FaceTime? I had planned on leading with telling her about how it made me feel. Okay. However, when I saw her face on the screen, it was like the Holy Spirit just whispered, stop. And I didn't lead with how it made me feel. I led with a question. First of all, I, I led with this. <clears throat> I said, hey, you know, it's, it's so good to see you. Okay. Which when you're having a hard conversation, the best thing to do <laughs> is to start off in a positive way, right? Yes. Just tell yes. somebody how much they mean to you or that you value them or, you know, something that's positive. Yeah. And I look back yeah. and I go, oh, just that simple, hey, you know, so good to see your face. That was positive yeah. and set a tone. And then the next yeah. thing I said was, tell me about what happened the other day. And yeah. she began to unfold this whole story about what has been going on with her husband. And it was like, mm. oh, Oh, and I even said to her, okay, mm. now this makes so much more sense because yeah. in my mind, I had formulated a story based on my experience, right? Which was what we all do. Right. But until right. I asked the question, I didn't have the full perspective. Uh, so when I yeah. asked the question, it was like, okay, now I have the full picture. Now moving yeah. forward, I have wisdom to know what to say next. Yeah. So I would say that simple practice of letting the other person go first, of affirming their relationship, yeah. and then asking a question, it pushes pause yeah. on our own emotions and it causes us to like go, okay, I need to get the full perspective here so that yeah. what I say is truly going to be helpful. So what ended up happening, yeah. I'll just tell you quickly the end of the story. You know, I said, okay, now that makes so much more sense. And then I said, can I tell you though how it made me feel? And she goes, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I said, it made me feel dismissed. And I just wish that you had texted me early or, or if you couldn't have done that, maybe just texted me like right afterwards and told me yeah. the backstory. And I said, can you understand why? And she said, oh my gosh, absolutely. And you are totally right. Yeah. And then she said this, she goes, you know what, Donna, I felt embarrassed because mm -hmm. I'd been so last minute. I wanted to avoid it. And so honestly, yeah. I felt super embarrassed and I thought it would be easier just not to say anything. Mm -hmm. And she said, thank you so much for bringing this up. So it didn't end up hurting our relationship. And then we ended up having this great conversation and it was the sweetest thing. And yeah. I remember ending the conversation and just sitting by myself just for a minute and thinking, wow, there yeah. is no amount of money on this earth that could buy that kind of peace. I'm so yeah. glad I handled it the way God told me to. Mm, so I love that. That's the, the long answer to your question. No, right. And I think it is good to point out that there are two sides to every story. I mean, this is a very minor example 
people, but I remember when I was on my way to one of my mammograms for my oncology follow-up, and I remember fighting against a lot of fear and anxiety on the drive, and there was a guy that was just riding me. I mean, he was just on my bumper, and it was causing so much stress, more than I already had, and I remember saying out loud, if he only knew the appointment I was going into, he would not be on my backside like that. And honestly, that little experience, though, has helped me even when I'm driving and I'm frustrated by another driver. It's like, oh, I don't know what they're going through right now. And I'm I'm sure my frustration may not help the matter. You know what I mean? And again, it's just a minor example, but it is a good reminder that there are two sides to every story. We don't know what everyone is thinking and what their experience is unless we ask. So I love that you pointed that out to ask them questions to kind of understand and have that empathy of why they responded or behaved in the way that they did. Okay, the next question. Since many of us, obviously, we want that peace. Like when you walked away from that FaceTime and you felt that peace, we want that. And again, like I've said, we would even love to avoid conflict if it's unnecessary, if we don't have to dive into conflict because it's just a one-time thing and we can show some grace. Maybe what would be your biggest piece of advice when you talk about conflict prevention? Yeah. <laughs> well, my biggest piece of advice is to get ahead of your expectations. I'll tell you another little story here. My yes. husband and I, in our first year of ma marriage, we had this little routine where we would come home late at night. We both worked insane hours. We'd come home late at okay. night. We'd put our jammies on. We'd turn on the TV. 10 minutes into our show, we'd get up and we'd get ourselves a bowl of ice cream. So yeah. one night, my husband got off the couch, went into the kitchen. I knew what he was doing. He comes back with one bowl of ice cream. And <laughs> I oh no. I mean, seriously, it's, it was such a ridiculous thing. I don't even know if I was just <laughs> hangry, PMSing. Yes. I, mean, I don't know why yes. this stupid thing makes <laughs> me mad. But for whatever reason, it did. You know, I said, Where's my bowl of ice cream? And he was like, well, what, what do you mean? I said, Well, we do this every night. How could you not know? And he goes, yeah. well, Donna, How can I know you wanted a bowl of ice cream unless you told me? So I go marching into the kitchen. I'm jerking out the. <laughs> Silverware drawer, <laughs> jerking up in the freezer, thinking he's so clueless, you know, blah, blah, blah. Yes. And he says, okay, I'm going to take out the garbage. And I said, okay, fine, buddy. And so yes. he walks to take out the garbage. And it was summer, so you had to pass our kitchen window, and our kitchen window was open. Okay. I see him go out to the garbage can, and then he comes back. And he stops in front of the kitchen window, and he presses his face right up to the screen. And he gets a big smile on his face. And yeah. then he says these words, expectation without communication leads to frustration. <laughs> and I started laughing. <laughs> Did you just make that up? And he goes, yep, just thought of it. Now, here's the I was going to say, that's pretty eloquent to think up on the spot like that. I know, I know. That, that's and a good I, catchphrase. Yeah, expectation without communication leads to frustration. Now, hmm. I've actually heard this on other podcasts. People have said, like, I don't know where I okay. heard this. Or, yeah. like, I've seen it in social media. And I want to go, my husband. That's my husband. I'm on his way back from taking out the trash. It's like copyright Mr. Jones. That, that's right. <laughs> For ice cream. The reason I say that though is because if we get consistently frustrated with something with our yeah. spouse, with our children, with yeah. our in laws, with our co workers, yeah. there's likely a pattern there where there is an expectation we had that went unfulfilled. So we get mm. frustrated. And so what yeah. we can do is we can backtrack and go, wait a minute, did I have some sort of expectation? that I didn't communicate clearly and it led to my frustration. Mm. Because here's That's the thing, point. Heidi, our expectations always end up getting communicated, but if they don't get communicated on the front end, they get communicated on the back end yeah. with mm. anger, with frustration. You know, let's just say we need our husband to help us with the kids. We're thinking in our mind, okay, I have three kids around me right now. Everybody's needing yeah. a piece of me and I'm trying to get dinner. Surely yeah. he's going to see what's going on and take one of these kids <laughs> away from me. Right? Surely, and surely, surely, surely he's going to see this, <laughs> but he doesn't. And in our mind, we're like, you got to be kidding me. And then finally yeah. our, our frustration reaches the boiling point and we do communicate our expectations, 
but mm. the way we communicate it is in anger and in frustration. Yeah. And so if we could catch our expectations quicker, we yeah. could just simply say, you know, hey, sweetheart, would you take one of these kids while yeah. I try to get dinner? And, you know, yeah. if we just communicated on the front end, then likely he would say, oh, yeah, sure, of course. So that's the key, I think, to prevent a lot of our conflict is just to be aware of our expectations and communicate yeah. them clearly and kindly. Yeah, it's really wise. And I do want to talk about, like you said, if we don't communicate those expectations on the front end, then likely they come out on the back end in anger. And so let's talk about that for a quick moment. When we're in conflict and let's say anger inevitably arises in that moment, how do you recommend managing that anger so we can proceed back to peace like it was? Do you have any helpful tips or anything that you do that helps? Yeah, that's such a good question. And I do want to say this is that because anger manifests itself in different ways with different people and different personality okay. types. So yeah. in the book, I have something called the, the conflict continuum. So it's kind of a line uh -huh. or it's not kind yeah. of a line. It is a line, but yes. on one side are the avoiders and okay. on the other side are the attackers. Okay. So if we're feeling angry, if we're an attacker, obviously our frustration will manifest itself in yelling, slam doors. It'll be something that's obvious, obvious, exactly. But on the other side, if we're an avoider, we'll still have that same anger, but instead of making it move outward, it will move inward yeah. and we will become bitter and resentful. So we will just keep spinning the scenario over in our mind and going back to say that illustration with our spouse, we'll start to be like, he never helps me with the kids. He is so insensitive yeah. and we'll build this narrative up in our mind where bitterness and resentment start to not just visit, but reside. Mm. All right. So okay. the biblical yeah. model is not to be either an avoider or an attacker because both of those are destructive, but the sweet spot in the middle is to be the addresser. And that's where we talk about things without avoiding and without attacking. And that's where Jesus wants us to yeah. land. That's an important thing to know because to manage our anger, we have to first know, where do I land on that continuum? Where am I? Okay. Yeah. And then if I'm an attacker, I need to realize like, okay, that's profoundly unhealthy because I'm just raising the anger sure. level in my home. How about if I just address it? And I do what the Bible says, which yeah. is speak the truth in love. But mm -hmm. also if I'm an avoider, I need to realize like, okay, that may seem on the outside more spiritual, but it is just yeah. as destructive. I might think that's bringing peace, but that's just being a peacekeeper, not a peacemaker. And they're very different. Mm -hmm. But peacemaking is yeah. what Jesus calls us to. So I would say, know where you are. And on my website, there is a quiz that you can take. It's a two minute quiz and it'll tell you what your conflict style is. There's a little video that I recorded, yes. pros and cons and like one thing to do to move forward, to be more healthy in your relationships. That's awesome. All right. And to wrap this up really, and I want to push into that where you talk about 10 common mistakes in your book that make our conflicts worse, not better. Can you maybe talk about a few of those and conversely, like what we can learn about those mistakes to lead the way to peace. Yeah. Well, there's, there is a chapter called 10 ways we accidentally make things worse rather than better, which is really interesting because, you know, even good people like you, like me, like your listeners, we don't want to make those mistakes, but yeah. we do largely because we don't even know that they're mistakes, right? So hmm. if somebody could just give us a list and go, don't do this. Yeah. I, you know, I find that's really helpful. So I think one of the biggest is to be dismissive of other people's concerns. You know, none of us want to be dismissive, but we are accidentally dismissive when we say things like, don't make this such a big deal. You know, just get over it, move on. Or like again, or, you know, Jesus doesn't want us to feel that. I don't have time for that right now. Or maybe we say to our children, like, you're such a drama queen. You know, all of those phrases are basically saying, I'm dismissing something that you're trying to communicate is important to you. One of the things that I have found to be really helpful in human relationships and even especially in parenting is to remember this. If it's yeah. important to you, it's important to me because that communicates value to the other person. And when you 
relate to people. Like if it's important to you, it's important to me and you communicate value, that relationship is likely going to go the long haul and be really helpful, healthy and helpful. So not dismissing hmm. things. And that, again, that goes back to listening. Let me just share this one yeah. last thing. This I think might be a piece of the puzzle that could be really helpful is that when people come yeah. at us, whether it's our spouse, our child, our coworker, our sister, whomever, and they have a concern, or maybe even they're coming at us with some messy emotions. They're coming at us yeah. with their frustration, with their anger, with their whatever. Our natural inclination yeah. is to want to shut that down immediately because we don't want to deal with somebody else's messy emotions. It makes us feel uncomfortable and we want to self-protect, right? That's just what we do. That's yeah. we're humans. However, when we dismiss other people's feelings, opinions, messy emotions, just right off the cuff, one of two things always happens in conflict. It escalates or it ends. Your child comes at you with some really messy emotions and you want to just shut it down. You know, <laughs> stop that right now, mister, <laughs> right? Or change your attitude. But when people have big feelings, what they're basically saying is, I just want to be understood, right? And the way we mm -hmm. show people that we understand yeah. them is by simply listening. Here's where we get tripped up. Listening does not equal agreement. Listening equals understanding. So the reason yeah. I think we have a hard time listening is because somebody's saying their opinion or their feelings and we want to go, wait, 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 no, 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 that's not my perspective. Let me tell you what I yeah. think, you know, because we think that yes. if we just allow them to speak and, and we're just listening, that communicates agreement, but it mm -hmm. just communicates care and understanding. So if we don't listen, the other person in their minds just subconsciously are thinking, she's not getting it yet. So I need to elevate this conflict by becoming yeah. more aggressive. I need to start yelling. I need to become more dramatic. I need to slam a door. You know, I need to do something to escalate it so that she'll see how important this is to me. Right? Yeah. If right. we still don't, they'll keep escalating it until they feel like she's never going to get it and they'll end it. And then they'll say okay. things like, okay, just forget it. You'll yeah. never get it. You never understand anyway. They'll just completely disengage. So it escalates or it ends. And by the way, we do the same thing, right? We, this is what we do. Yeah. So if we, with people's messy emotions, can just simply go, okay, my first step, the only thing I need to do here is just listen. What yeah. that will do, it, it will take all of the emotions that are heightened and it will dissipate those feelings so that then a conversation can happen. So even if you um, don't agree with a single thing the person is saying, the simple act of just listening and letting them get it out is going to set the stage for then you to say what you think or have a conversation and the conflict to work through well. And most importantly, like, see, so you didn't dismiss it. And so yeah. it allowed you to address it. That mm. I think would be the most important thing that we can do yeah. in conflict. Well, man, Donna, I just feel like after this conversation, I just want to keep going and going. And the good news is we can hear more. I mean, you just came out with a book and it is all about this. Could you maybe share more about your book? Yes, I would love to. It's called Healthy Conflict, Peaceful Life. And the subtitle is A Biblical Guide to Communicating Thoughts, Feelings, and Opinions with Grace, Truth, and Zero Regret. <laughs> hmm. And I love actually the subtitle because yes. I think that's what we all want to do. We all want to learn how to say what we need to say, you know, with grace, truth, yeah. and not feel like, oh, I handled that so wrong, but at least feel like, no, you know what, even if it doesn't turn out the way you had hoped that you can be assured, I, but I did the right thing. I don't have regrets in how yeah. I handled that conflict. So it's uber practical and it's great for like small yeah. groups or couples. There's discussion questions at the end of each chapter. And it is just so my hope that it will cause yeah. people to have healthier relationships and unify the body yeah. of Christ and 
people have better marriages and better relationships yes. with their kids. And that's it. Healthy conflict. Peaceful. Well, man, thank you for tackling this topic because it feels like something that is overwhelming, but it's always prevalent. We always have certain conflicts, no matter where we are or who we are or who's around us, it's inevitable. So thank you for helping us trade the lie, though, that conflict can't be healthy and peaceful. And we can trade that for the truth that we don't have to shy away from it. In fact, it can be healthy if we respond in love, if we are slow to speak, if we are quick to listen, if we really follow how Jesus proceeded with conflict and how he wants us to proceed with conflict season with grace, man, it is possible. And that's what he wants for us. He's the God of restoration. So thank you so much. And Donna, as a, as a way to end every episode, we just do a lightning round, a quick five rapid fire questions. And so I'm just going to throw some at you, just share your knee jerk reaction. And uh, it's just meant to be fun. All right. Okay. okay so here's the first question. Who or what is your favorite? 90s Christian artist or song? Oh my gosh, 90s. <laughs> well, okay, it feels like the, go back. The, the 90s have made a comeback, you know, not only with fashion, but man, even last week at church, our, our church sang, Here I Am to Worship. I'm like, okay, we're back in it. We're back in the 90s all the world. <laughs> Okay, 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 okay. I have one. I don't I think this might be the nineties or early two thousands or something. Yeah. Um okay, do you remember the Stephen Curtis Chapman song? I'm diving yes. in. Okay. Oh, hundred percent. I don't know when that was. That was for sure nineties. No, you're okay. right. That is awesome. That was a solid one. That's a good throwback we should just put on our playlist for fun today. All right, question number two. Which book of the Bible have you read more than any other, do you think? Oh, good question. Uh, probably <laughs> the book of Ephesians. I was going to say the book of John. Ah. I've read that a lot, but I'm going to say I've done a lot of deep dives into the book of Ephesians. Which I is such a book. good practical book. I do love that yeah. book. All right. Question number three. Would you rather lead a Bible study through the Song of Solomon or chaperone a youth group lock-in? <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> um, I think I would rather shop, uh, shop for, I mean, I, either one, I would, I would be so game for either one, but I'm going to say okay. the youth group lock in. I think that'd be kind of fun. Oh, bless your heart for being willing to do both. I mean, I'm like, I'm going to avoid Song of Solomon at all costs if I can. <laughs> Number four, would you have rather watched Jesus heal a blind man or have watched him walk on water? Oh, watched him walk on water for sure. Wouldn't that have that been amazing? Be okay. Number five, what is a miracle you have seen in your own life? Does anything come to mind? Yes. Yes. We planted a church. My husband and I planted a church and oh. we, it was not anything we ever thought we would do, wanted to do. Yeah. It was just the hand of the Lord. My husband went on a 10 day fast to discern if this wow. was really, truly what God would have us do. Yeah. And we stepped out in faith and a man that we did not even know contacted my husband and said, I heard you're going to start a church. I know you're going to need money handed my husband a check for $50,000. Whoa. Uh, yeah. Whoa. Yeah. I just and got goosebumps all over. A huge, yeah. A huge confirmation that it was God saying, you heard me correctly. I'm in this. Hmm. Go hmm. do it. And we did it. <sighs> I love hearing stories like that because, you know, sometimes we can read Bible stories and think, man, that is so cool that he walked on water. That is so cool that Elijah called down fire from heaven. That is so cool that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were spared from the fiery furnace. But I haven't seen things like that today. And I think it's just a matter of we got to keep talking about the things that the Lord has done because, man, he is still living. He is active. He is alive. He is in our lives moving. And it's so cool to hear stories like that. That is an amazing miracle. How cool, Donna. Well, thank you again for joining us today and helping us tackle this slide. Would you mind praying for all of us as a way to send us out in the truth today? I would love to. Lord Jesus, mm -hmm. thank you for your word and how your word contains the truth for us to um, know and for us to live by. God, it sets us free in every way. It sets us free for eternal salvation, but it also sets us free, God, in our relationships. And Jesus, you prayed that we would have unity. This is on your heart. And so, Lord, I pray that we would deal with our conflict according to your word.
and that we would be quick to listen and slow to speak and slow to become angry. And that God, as a result, we would experience your peace and your pleasure as you look down on us and smile and say, um, that's my child who handled her conflict in a healthy and holy way. And I pray this mm -hmm. in Jesus name. Amen. Amen.